Well, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship the Rhone Avenue Christian Church. I'm Dr. Matt, as always. Welcome to this time of worship and wonder and birds are singing. Yeah, it's beautiful weather for once. Oh, it's, it's often beautiful here. But as we gather, we come to place ourselves in God's presence, to open ourselves to what God is doing, and to listen for God's voice. So as we move into the rest of our worship, I invite us to Sing together the Lord's Prayer. As we come to our time of prayer today, um, there's a lot to be praying for, as always. Just heard this morning that nine more people are dead in this country from a mass shooting outside of Dallas, Texas, yesterday in a mall, apparently. Uh, at least nine people dead and uh, several others in the hospital, not many details at this point. I feel like that wasn't the only shooting I heard about this week, but it just keeps happening over and over. And in the context of that kind of thing, we have things like the Tennessee legislatures being kicked out for talking about gun legislation, even though they've been restored now, at least temporarily. And then in Montana, uh, a state legislator was also um, removed or kicked out of the chamber for speaking out uh, against an anti-trans bill, person speaking out happens to be trans, but you don't have to be trans to talk about how evil and pernicious these bills are, uh, denying people health care or the right to exist as they are. Former president's under trial. I think the trial's wrapping up, if I remember right. So soon we'll see what comes of that. If there is a justice in the civil courts for E. Jean Carroll and others. And those are just a few things off the top of my head from paying attention to the news this week. 
nation needs a lot of prayer. Justice does move, though, because we had uh, four members of the Proud Boys, including the head of it, um, convicted of seditious conspiracy, following the uh, what Oath Keepers who were convicted of that. And so this charge, which is hardly ever brought in U.S. history now, has been, uh, you've got quite a few people now being convicted of it in the past uh, several months. So yeah, those are some things going on in our wonderful world. Anything else we should be praying for? So prayers for Jerry. Uh, prayers for strength. He's asking for prayers uh, for strength so that he can get back to work. Um, and we'll also be praying that the defibrillator doesn't go off. That, yeah, that would be a good thing to be praying for too. Norm asking prayers for trust and faith in the midst of a really tough situation. Just having to care for all these other folks. Prayers for Janine as she's uh, waiting results of a biopsy, which she may not do anything about anyway. And, um, yeah, prayers for her uh, body and all the bruising she has from the biopsy. And, and then prayers for Mike also. Uh, he's still up with his parents, and Dad's not doing well. Um, on morphine for pain, and um, so having to deal with his, and his mom's not handling it well, which is understandable, so he, then he's dealing with that. And then prayers for Mike in the caregiver role, having issues with his own shoulder, and Norma in the caregiver role with, uh, you know, back, back pain and, and issues too, so... Oh, I just want to surround you with a lot of prayer. Any job news? Not for you, but yeah, you know, your husband. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Yeah. All right. So congratulations, Chris, when you're watching this at some point. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's great. So Chris got the job he was hoping for, and it sounds like everything worked out financially and in all the different ways. So oh, that's, that's, that's really good news. Awesome. When does that start? Uh, May 22nd. May 22nd. Okay. So. Awesome. That's good. Some good news. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I want to ask prayers. Um, one of my students at, at Fuller, um, just uh, her brother just suddenly and completely unexpectedly died, uh, I think just a couple days ago. And um, she's from Guyana, so she's trying to work out, like travel back for the funeral. And um, yeah, and this is all happening, you know, and she's in a couple of different classes. And so her advisor, you know, contacted us and let us know. And then, um, so and just prayers for her. As she deals with that and family, and, and actually, I have another student. I'll, as long as I'm on student run, uh, an APU student, because I teach at multiple schools, um, who is dealing with. Um, they were dealing with what they thought might have been dyslexia or something, and it turns out that they're actually having uh, vision problems, and it's. The, they haven't gotten a real clear diagnosis yet, so I don't know if it's going to be a progressive thing or what, but um, they've been having just a lot of trouble with schoolwork and, um, yeah, needing to figure out, you know, what kind of fonts maybe work or doing, you know, doing things orally, um, trying to navigate that and on top of other um uh, issues that they're dealing with as well so well let's go to God God we come to you although we know that you're always with us 
But we come to you because we don't always know that you're with us. We don't always feel it. We don't always sense it. And yet, here you are. God, make yourself known in all the dis different situations that we've raised here. All the places and people that are hurting, that are crying out, crying out in grief, crying out in pain, crying out in loneliness, in overwhelm. Visit us, God. Help us to know your presence, whether that be a word, just a sense, a reminder, a song, a voice. God, we need you. You got to pray for those who are hurting, those who are suffering, <clears throat> those who are in pain, uh, who are ill, who are navigating health care, even end of life. And we also lift up the caregivers who also have their own pains, physical, mental, Spiritual, physical. Jesus, you said that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. But sometimes our burdens feel very heavy. Sometimes we feel that we're going to fall and be crushed by them. Please find ways to lighten them from us. Bring help where possible. Open new avenues to relieve the stress of all the work, the finances. And God, we do rejoice in this new position that you've led Chris to. We pray that it would be a blessing to him and Wes, but also a blessing to the city of Los Angeles. That his presence would be one that would shine light into new and growing areas of the community. God, we thank you that you are with us even when we don't know it or feel it. But you sent your Son to be among us and to love us. And for that we are grateful. And so it's in his name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 14. Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My Father's house has many room, has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me so that where I am, you will be too. You know the way to the place I'm going. Thomas asked, uh, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you've really known me, you will also know the Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That'll be enough for us. 
Jesus replied, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been with you all this time, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does his works. Trust me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on account of the works themselves. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask for in my name so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. So this passage in John 14, and we're going to continue the next part of the chapter next week. Um, this comes in the context of John's telling of the, the Last Supper. The disciples have gathered together, they're in that room, and they're sharing the meal together. And in John's Gospel, um, Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. Only happens in John, or John's the only one who told us about it. Jesus then predicts that someone's going to betray him. And of course, they all wonder, wait, is it me? Is it me? And then he gives them a new commandment. Love one another. It's a simple commandment and maybe the hardest one to keep. Love one another. And then he tells Peter, before this all is over, you're going to deny that you even know me three times. And then we arrive at the passage for today, which notice begins with this statement, don't be troubled, trust in God, trust also in me. So the chapter begins with, don't be troubled, trust. And that I think needs to be uh, kind of how we look at the rest of this passage. It's through that lens of Jesus trying to reassure them, don't be troubled, trust God, trust me. He starts talking about this house that has a lot of room to spare, many rooms, or many mansions, depending on the translation. And we imagine this place far away with all this enormous space, and we've all got our own place, and Jesus is going to prepare a place and return and take us. And in looking at the passage for today, I found out that the, the word there for house or mansion or place is um, it's a noun form of the, the verb abide. And all through this, this, this discourse at the Last Supper, Jesus is talk about, talking about abiding in him. The birds have even entered the room. There it goes. Whoosh, just flew out the other door. <laughs> that was cool. He <laughs> just walked in, went, whoosh, took off. Uh, so, um, yeah, where was I? Before the bird. Hmm. Thank you, abiding, yes. So uh, actually in the next chapter, chapter 15, is really where Jesus goes into this idea of abiding. That's where you get the whole vine, I am the vine, you are the branches, abide in me. And so what Jesus is saying is this, this, there, there is a place of abiding. There is a state of abiding, and, I, and you are going to be in it with me, and I'm going to get it ready, and I'm going to come, and I'm going to bring you to it. And then Thomas, big Thomas, right? And again, I have an affinity for Thomas. Um, he says, we don't know where you're going. How are we going to find the way? And Jesus just responds basically saying, well, that's me. I am the way. Like, 
You think I'm not going to make sure you get there? I'm, I, am, I am the place of abiding. I, I am the way. I'm also the truth. I am the life. So don't worry about figuring out how you're going to get there because I'm the way there. And Philip, <laughs> Philip uh, then speaks up and he, he has his own question then. He's like, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. That, that's enough. Just show us the Father. Yeah, sure. Just, you know, make that happen. And then Jesus basically says, um, Phil, let's talk about incarnation. I am in the Father, the Father is in me. If you have seen me, you've seen the Father. That's, that's the point of this whole thing. And he seems a little exasperated here. He's like, how can you say, show us the Father? How long have you been with me that you haven't figured this out? Right? Jesus seems a little exasperated here. And, and he's like, the whole point of this whole incarnation thing, right? God coming in the flesh, here I am. It's like, you still haven't quite got it yet, have you? So Jesus reminds us that the incarnation, the whole point of the incarnation is that we would see the face of God in Jesus. Now, I did skip over a little bit of a passage there. Um, after Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he says, no one comes to the Father but through me. And this has troubled people for a long time, this, that, that piece. No one comes to the Father except through me. Because that's been used to say, ah, yes, so if you are not in Jesus, you're damned. And then people think, well, wait, what about before Jesus was born? What about all those people? What about people living on the other side of the world? And all these questions come up, right? No one comes to the Father except by me. What in the world do we do with that? But remember that the context for this whole chapter was that first verse. Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me. Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me. And so maybe a better way to hear that is as a reassurance that if you're with me, you've got the access to God. If you're with me, you have the way to the Father because I am the way. It's a reassurance to the disciples and to those reading later that there is a way. And I was reading about this and one um, commentator pointed out that we could think about this in the context of the church. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. Is the church centered on Jesus? I think it's a really good question right now, and I kind of got at it, I think it was last week. The church can be tempted by politics, by power, by the zeitgeist. I love that German word. It means like the spirit of the time, right? The, the spirit of the time. We can get wrapped up in the politics and the economics and the power struggles of the present day. But in doing that, do we lose Jesus. And if we lose Jesus, we lose the Father. No one comes 
to the Father, but by me. Is the church today distinctly Jesus-centered? And in my completely, admittedly fallible, humble opinion, there's a large part of the church that is not centered on Jesus. And I hope that we are. <laughs> you know, but it's a question for all of us, I think. Has the church lost the way? And if so, how do we get that back? How do we speak out for the kinds of things that Jesus was concerned about, the kinds of things that Jesus did, the ways that he healed, he brought wholeness to people, he included people, he sat at table with people? He pronounced judgment on those who were too caught up in their own strict interpretations of how things should be. He questioned the powers, even the political powers. Pilate had to ask him, what is truth? Whoa, punctuated that one. So are we Jesus-centered? Have we lost the way? Jesus tells us, don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in me. So maybe if we think that the church has lost its way, or parts of the church, maybe even ourselves, have lost the way, the truth, and the life. We come back to trust. Funny that you mentioned that in the prayer time. Come back to trust. Let us pray. Lord God, we... Thank you for the incarnation. Thank you for Jesus showing us who you are. Help us to remain focused on Jesus and thereby focused on you. Help us to see as a church in this room, but also in this world across this nation and others, what it means to follow you on the way. And so it's in the name of the way, Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to come to Christ's table, I invite us to sing together, The Church is One Foundation,
Welcome to Christ's table. At Christ's table, we meet the way, the truth, and the life. The one who brings us into the presence of God. On that night so long ago, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this to remember me. And then he took a cup, and again he gave thanks. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. Borei peri hagaf, and blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, the creator, the fruit of the vine. Do this to remember me. This is the body of Christ, broken for us. This is the blood of Christ shed for us. Thanks be to God for the gifts of God, for the people of God. of invitation today is, Hear, O Lord, your servants gather. And this may be a new tune for us, so do your best to follow along. We've got a few verses to get warmed up and into it. But as we sing, this is our opportunity to commit ourselves and recommit ourselves to the God who is not only the one who shows us the way, but who is the way. So let's see.
And now as we go, may God be above us to watch over us. May God be beneath us to lift us up. May God be ahead of us to lead us. May God be behind us to push us. May God be beside us to walk with us. And may God be within us to love us forever. Amen. Trust me, I get, yeah, I get it. You want to help, but there's a limit where you just, you got to take care of yourself too.